Okay, this is one of the stock shifter assemblies that we'll be removing from my 1998 RS. But before we go ahead and remove this from the RS, I went ahead and made a diagram up on this whiteboard so I can walk you guys through all the locations that we're gonna to need to remove components from the shifter and so you guys can get a better idea of how this shifter actually functions and how it's designed to work. Okay, you're looking at a whiteboard diagram breaking down how the stock OEM style Subaru shifters work. And I basically labeled all the main components here and I'm gonna walk you guys through that real fast first. Basically, these stock style shifters use two different rods and then a main shaft right here with a couple of different pivot points. And the way they're designed is that that lower rod is basically a fixed rod and they use rubber bushings on both sides of that rod to kind of insulate it from the vibrations of the transmission and the vehicle because this side of the rod is actually attached directly to the transmission. And then this side of the rod is actually bolted to the vehicle body right underneath the driver's compartment. And there's a pivot point right here where this shifter is allowed to pivot slightly. And then there's a pivot point right here that goes to this second rod that actually sits above that first rod. So the second rod is actually the rod that connects to your transmission input shaft. And it actually connects right here through a roll pin. There's actually a transmission input shaft that continues all the way over here. And this rod pushes that transmission input shaft in or out or rotates it. That's how you select different gears in your transmission. So this is the main rod that's doing all that gear selection. And as you'll see here, there's a roll pin. It's actually a two piece roll pin. And I'll talk about that later in the video, but that's gonna be one of the pieces we need to remove to take the stock shifter assembly out. There's also a couple of pivot points here that I've called out in purple, a pivot point down here and a pivot point right here that I've called out in purple. So all the purple is the pivot points. And then the red is the hardware. So I got a roll pin right here that's a two piece. There's also a 12 millimeter nut that's attaching to this rubber bushing and this lower fixed brace arm. And then over here, you'll see I have two 12 millimeter bolts that you need to remove. And those are underneath the vehicle in the rear of the shifter assembly. To remove this shifter assembly, there's actually only four locations you have to worry about. You have to take this 12 millimeter nut off this lower brace. You have to take these two bolts off the back half of that lower brace. And that's actually a separate little piece that has a rubber bushing in it as well. And then you have to take this roll pin out of this kind of U-joint assembly for the upper rod. Once you've got all four of those locations removed, this shifter assembly is basically completely disconnected from the bottom half. Now there's actually a rubber boot that actually gets attached through the top half through the cabin of the vehicle. And it's gonna have a bunch of Phillips screws that are screwed in from the interior cabin holding that rubber boot down. So after you get these four locations removed from the underside of the vehicle, you still need to remove those six Phillips screws from that rubber boot from the interior cabin of the vehicle. And that's basically how these Subaru shifter assemblies work. The lower rod is fixed. The upper rod connects to that transmission input shaft and selects your gears. And then this is the main gear shaft arm where your gear shift knob actually screws down onto. Okay, so let's head over to my 1998 RS and start removing this stock shifter assembly. Okay, so step one is to remove that stock OEM shifter. As you can see, I already have the car up on jack stands. And the first step is to go ahead and remove all the components on the interior of the cabin. So basically removing this stock shifter is gonna be kind of a two-stage process. The first stage is gonna be in the cabin and that's gonna be removing the center console and then removing the shifter assembly and all the fasteners on the top half in here in the cabin of the shifter. And then I'll get underneath the vehicle and I'll move the fastener from those four locations, two bolts on the rear of the shifter assembly and then another stud nut holding one of the rods and that roll pin holding that U-joint assembly. So that's basically the game plan and the approach. Remove the center console, remove all the fastener stuff on the top half, get underneath the vehicle, move those four fastener locations underneath the vehicle, and then pull the whole shifter assembly out through the top in here in the cabin. Like I said earlier, the first step to removing the shifter assembly is to remove the center console. Once you remove the center console, then we can get access to the shifter assembly and remove all the surrounding trim that actually is holding the shifter assembly down from the top half. And removing these center consoles is really pretty easy, but I'm gonna walk you guys through it one more time. Okay, to remove this center console, the first step is to open this console lid and then go ahead and peek in here and you'll see there's actually two or three screws holding this console down. So remove those two to three Phillips screws first and then you're gonna wanna go ahead and pop these little caps off and take out these two Phillips screws as well. These two Phillips screws are holding this e-brake shifter surround piece in place. I'll show you guys that right now. Whoops, make sure you don't lose that sucker. And then once you remove those two or three screws down there and these two screws right here, you should be able to pop this e-brake surround out and disconnect the little power window switch. 
And after we get this e-brake surround piece out, we'll move over to the shifter surround. All right, so I'll start with removing these three screws from the center console right here in the inner little cubby area. And then go ahead and remove these two screws that are holding this e-brake surround in. And then you should be able to pop this e-brake surround up and out. You might need to lift your e-brake up slightly to give it some more clearance. And then you'd have to disconnect this plug. I actually don't have my plug for my power mirrors plugged in right now. So that's that first piece. Go ahead and move that and set it to the side. And then we'll move over to the shifter and the shift knob. So for the shift knob, you basically just want to push this rubber boot down and dislodge it from the little slot that it's sunk into. And then go ahead and counterclockwise twist the shifter off. And then spin it all the way off. I'm actually using a later model 5-speed shifter currently because it's actually a really nice feel and I really just like the OEM look. And then once you've taken that shift knob off, you can go ahead and pop this shifter surround out. Just basically get underneath it right here and pop it up from the bottom first. And that should allow you to pop it out nice and easily without damaging it or without damaging any of these little clips on the bottom. There's actually six little mounting spots on the bottom right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is your shifter surround. Go ahead and set that to the side. Now that I have that shifter surround removed, you can actually access this entire shifter assembly without removing the rest of the center console. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the center console to give myself a little bit more access and to make it a little bit easier to film this video for you guys. But if you choose to leave the center console in, which I believe you can, the next thing you'll do is remove this trim surround that actually holds the shifter in place. So go ahead and remove all six of these Phillips screws that hold this shifter surround in place. And if you guys have looked at some of the other videos from Dark Matter X, you're gonna know that this is where you actually have to trim the shifter surround. Or at least that's my understanding from looking at the videos. This is definitely my first time installing this in a GC, and there actually isn't any videos out there for installing this Dark Matter X shifter in a GC, which I guess means I'll be one of the first people creating a video for this Dark Matter X shifter install in a GC body vehicle. But I highly recommend you guys go ahead and check out the Dark Matter X website or the Dark Matter X YouTube page and watch their video on installing this Dark Matter X shifter in a late model STI. I believe they install it in a 2017 or 18 STI. But a lot of the procedures and steps will be very similar to what you need to do to install the shifter in a GC body. Okay, and getting back to the console, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this console to give myself a little bit more room. And to remove this console, the only thing I need to do now is remove this screw, this screw, and this screw down here. Three more screws, and this whole center console should be able to be removed and give myself a lot more room to film and work with the shifter assembly. Now, like I said earlier, guys, you can actually leave this center console in, it appears. I don't think you need to remove this entire center console to do this Dark Matter X shifter install. But it literally takes three more screws, which is not very much at all. And then this whole sucker can come out and give you a little bit more room, which I'm gonna go ahead and do just to make it a little easier. All right, and boom, just like that, a whole center console is out. And literally, this should only take you about five minutes, guys. It's really, really easy on these first-gen Imprezas. That's one of the big reasons I love these GCs. In addition to them having so much character and having great, great design, all the mechanical aspects of these cars are a little bit simpler and a little bit faster and easier to work with than the newer body styles. Okay, next I'll go ahead and remove these six Phillips screws. All right, and that's the last one. We can go ahead and remove this plate. Might be a little bit sticky, but don't worry about that. Boom. And we're gonna go ahead and mark off exactly where we're gonna notch this sucker. Because like I said earlier, that STI shift rod from the STI six speed is actually gonna make contact with this metal plate in this region. So we're gonna probably notch off this whole section of this corner. It's not really needed for any kind of structural support of the shifter. Okay, now that we've got that shifter surround moved, this whole shifter assembly is basically completely disconnected from the top half of this vehicle. And next we'll go underneath the vehicle and we'll disconnect this shifter assembly from the four locations that I talked about earlier. There'll be two bolts on the back half of the shifter assembly that kind of stabilizes one of the rear rods. And there's actually gonna be a stud with a nut on it on the lower rod. And then it'll actually be a little U-joint assembly that connects to the transmission input shaft that the shifter actually uses to push forward and select a gear with. So let's head underneath the vehicle and get those four mounting locations disconnected next. All right, so we're under the car and there's basically four points on the shifter that we're gonna need to disconnect to get this whole shifter assembly out. So I'm looking up underneath here. You're basically looking at the drive shaft right there. This is the catalytic converter here that's right here in the foreground. And up there is the shifter rod assembly. 
So it's basically a point down here. Let me see if I can reach underneath. There's a point right here that we need to disconnect. And there's a little 10 millimeter bolt right there, it looks like, that we need to take off. And then I think this whole arm should slide off of this like rubber bushing little stud. And then there's actually another little joint right there. It's kind of like a U-joint kind of connection. And that looks like another 10 millimeter or maybe 12 millimeter. So we need to either take that bottom bolt right there to slide it out and slide it out or there's actually a roll pin behind it right there. And we need to pop that roll pin out to take that upper arm assembly out. And that's what actually connects to that transmission shaft that selects your gears by you know, pushing it forward or backwards or rotating it to the left or right. So that's what we need to take out by either the roll pin or that little bolt. I think I'll probably take the roll pin so I get the whole assembly out. And then here in the back, if I move to the back, all right, looking here in the back, you can kind of see this bolt right here. This is towards the back of the transmission. So I flip the camera around, I'm looking towards the back of the car and this bolt right here and another bolt on the other side that's in the same location. This is kind of a symmetrical piece right here with two bolts. You gotta take these two bolts out too. This is what's holding the rear portion of that transmission shifter assembly. All right, for this first rod right here, this nut is a 12 millimeter nut and I'm just using an offset box end wrench to loosen that nut. And an offset box end wrench gets in here pretty easily, as you guys can see. And I'll slowly just back this nut off. And then I think this first arm will be able to slide off of the stud and the rubber bushing that it's kind of attached with. Incidentally, this rubber bushing is one of the bushings I think you can replace with a stiffer bushing to get a little bit stiffer shifter feel if you're using all the stock shifter components. But of course, I'm actually using this aftermarket Dark Matter X shifter now, so we'll see. I'm actually gonna use this stuff. Let's see if I can get in there now and take that nut all the way off by hand. All right, cut that nut off, bam. And I think this rod can slide out if there's some flexibility in it. No, it's a little tight. I think the next step I'll do is go ahead and loosen the back bolts because these back bolts are what hold this rod kind of in place. So once I remove the back bolts, I think this rod will slide off a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a 12 millimeter box end wrench or maybe a 12 millimeter socket and get these rear two bolts off next. Okay, I'm flipped around here towards the back of the vehicle and I can get my box end wrench up here to get this 12 millimeter bolt out that's holding the rear portion of that shifter. Kind of the rear rod is held in place with these two bolts and a little bracket and a bushing. Not a lot of room in here though. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get a socket and a ratchet and see if I can get a little better angle with that. All right, got a socket here with a, like a flexible head and a little long socket. And that should work a little better to get this little bolt out. Incidentally, guys, you wanna take your downpipe off or if you already have your downpipe off, this would be a little bit easier with this downpipe completely pulled out because the downpipe is attached to this cat and you can actually take the whole unit out. I'm gonna try to do it without removing my cat and downpipe, just to kind of see how easy the process is to do without doing that. All right, now I can kind of get into my finger and take out the rest of this little bolt. Bam, got it, right there. That's that little 12 millimeter bolt right there. All right, I'm on the passenger side, still facing the rear, and this is that other bolt. It's a little bit dark and hard to see because it's covered with mud. But you should be able to get in here with a ratchet and just back that bolt off. I got a flexible head extension here, or a flexible head ratchet with a short little, or with a long socket, 12 millimeter. And as you can see, it's really tight in here, but especially with the drive shaft right nearby where this thing is, but you can get in there and you should be able to loosen it up. You can even get a hand in there, it's tight. But once you loosen it, you should be able to get your fingers in there. And I know I'm completely covering the nut or the bolt, but I'm getting in there with two fingers so I can get the, that little bolt out. Bam, like that. And we have both bolts out of the back of the shifter assembly. So that front rod, the lower front rod should be able to be slipped off now. Okay, as you can see, I got that little stud off. Basically, after you get the nut off, there's a little metal plate and you have to slide that plate off. And my plate was a little bit kind of wedged on this little stud. So I had to use a flat blade screwdriver to kind of work that plate off. Once I slid that plate off, I was able to slide this rod off 
in that rubber bushing. So after you get that plate off, you should be able to slide this rod off that stud and then push it up and out of the way. But I'm also gonna remove this little U-joint assembly by popping that little metal roll pin out of that little shifter input shaft. Okay guys, this is a roll pin assembly. This is actually a two-piece roll pin. There's a smaller inner diameter roll pin right there, as you can see on the, on the right side. And then there's a larger roll pin. Right now, the smaller one is still stuck in the, in the larger one slightly. So basically you need to pop out that smaller one first, and then you can pop out the larger roll pin. And real fast, I'll mention there's a quick little tip for getting these roll pins out. I actually like to use one of these little vibrating tools. This is actually a nail, vibrating little nail installer uh, from Craftsman. This one actually has a pivoting head, so you can pivot the head by pushing this button. And then when you push this little button, uh, there's a little vibration that takes place on the inside right there. Basically, this little nail installer with a small little vibrator and then a little drift like this works perfect to take these little roll pins out. It literally pops these roll pins out in like two or three seconds. You just gotta have the right size drift and be able to have one of these little vibrating little nail installers. And I actually use this one because it has a, a pivoting head so you can get up underneath at the exact angle you need and then hit the button and it vibrates that little pin right out using that little drift. Works great every time. And you can see the hole right there where the roll pin came out. So now that we have all four of those points unbolted and disconnected on the bottom half of the shifter assembly, we should be able to go in the cabin and remove this entire shifter assembly through the top. Okay, once we've got everything disconnected underneath the vehicle and this shifter assembly is completely loose, we should be able to remove this shifter assembly from the interior cabin that I'm in. So go ahead and kind of work this sucker back. We're just gonna basically pull this back piece out first, I think. Let's see here. All right, this is that rear stabilizing bracket with that little rubber bushing. A lot of the aftermarket suppliers actually sell little upgraded versions of this with a polygraphite bushing in it because this rubber bushing gets softer and softer over time. I can actually even squeeze it with my thumb and feel how soft it is. All right, and since I have all the different points on the bottom disconnected, you should be able to pull the sucker out completely. All right, and there we have it. There's the entire shifter assembly pulled out through the top half through the cabin of the vehicle. Once you have it disconnected from those four mounting locations on the bottom, and you have it disconnected on the top half with that plate, it's really pretty easy to slip the sucker out through the cabin. Okay, and just taking a closer look at it and kind of orienting ourselves, this is basically the rear of that shifter assembly. This is where we had those two bolts that kind of bolted in underneath the vehicle with those 12 millimeter bolts. And then this half on the left right here, this is gonna be on the front of the vehicle. And this is that lower one that actually goes over that stud. And there's a 12 millimeter bolt that I had to unscrew underneath the vehicle. And this is that U-joint that had the little roll pin. So basically I used a little vibrating little hammer tool to pop that little roll pin out. And once you pop that little roll pin out, there's actually the hole for the roll pin right there. Once you pop that roll pin out, this little U-joint apparatus actually slides right out. And incidentally, this little U-joint actually has a bushing in here that wears over time. So it's definitely a good idea to replace this little U-joint when you replace or upgrade your shifter assembly. And like I mentioned earlier, there's actually companies that sell polygraphite bushings for your stock shifter assembly. When you buy those polygraphite bushings, a lot of times what you're buying is a bushing that goes right here in the back and a bushing that goes up here in the front. And when you do that, like I said, I definitely recommend you replace this little U-joint up here as well. So that is a stock OEM shifter assembly.